All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for uh, joining us today to learn a little bit more about Center for Student Opportunity, the I'm First Project, and our college partnership program. I'm Matt Rubinoff, uh, Executive Director. I'm joined uh, by my colleague, Krista D'Amelio, who oversees our, our college partnership, uh, and you'll be hearing from momentarily. Um, I know there are some, some folks who are still joining us, but uh, for the sake of time, we're, we're going to dive into things and uh, um, take some questions at the end. So uh, if you have questions, uh, please type those into um, the, uh, the chat box, and we'll, uh, we'll leave a few minutes uh, after our presentation to, uh, to field some of your questions. So I think we can all agree that there is something about being the first, whether it's the first in flight, or the first man on the moon, the first African-American president, first kisses, first impressions, first place. Well, we think there's something special about being the first in your family to attend and graduate from college. 30% of students enrolled in post-secondary institutions today are first-generation college students. 24% are both low-income and first-gen, and that total is about 3.5 million students across the country. But unfortunately, 89% of these students, or, or 9 out of every 10, will not earn a bachelor's degree by the age of 24. The issue is not so much that would-be first-generation college students lack the motivation or qualification for college, but more so that they lack access to good information and support to navigate the college process, and more importantly, to access the colleges and universities that are most committed to their success. We know that so many four-year colleges and universities, like the ones you represent, care about first-gen students, can be accessible and affordable options for them and certainly give students the best shot at being successful in and out of the classroom and graduating. But the challenge is making sure that the students and their supporters believe it. All too often, even high-achieving, motivated students are choosing post-secondary options that aren't the most conducive to their success, whether that's the for-profits, the trade schools, non-selective commuter schools, even two-year colleges in, in many cases. Um, simply because that's what these students believe to be the only realistic, attainable, and affordable option for them. So our goal, first and foremost, is to help aspiring first-gen students take a more glass-half-full approach to their college search and to realize that the opportunity for college exists for them, particularly at four-year residential schools that have campus programs and support services to help these students succeed academically, socially, and financially. Since 2006, our organization, Center for Student Opportunity, has created tools to help first gens plan for and research college, and we've partnered with colleges and universities to promote and strengthen your efforts on behalf of first-gen students. Uh, we've grown this network to about 170 institutions uh, who've been involved in our program and supporting our work uh, to this date. Uh, we started our programming with a college search website, which uh, was called CSO College Center, and a few years later published a college guidebook called the College Access and Opportunity Guide. Some of you may be familiar with, uh, with those resources. Over the years um, of, of operating and uh, disseminating those, those, those tools and resources, we've, we've really learned two things loud and clear. One is that popular college search websites and guidebooks just aren't cutting it for first-gen students, and, and there's a, a real niche and need that we are filling in this space. And two, as much as well-meaning counselors, teachers, and mentors want to help, at the end of the day, uh, students are really responding most to their peers to motivate them in their pursuit of college. So in 2012, as we, be, we began to plan for updating our online presence program, it also began a, a rebranding process for us. Uh, we conceived what has become the I'm First Project 
uh, to really build a, a true online community designed to celebrate first generation college students and to help the next generation of students who will be first plan for college and research college and universities that care about students like them. Uh, after a year of beta development uh, with the help of the College Knowledge Challenge, a Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation grant competition that we won earlier this year, we officially launched I'm First this fall. Uh, we've had some early success and received a, a warm reception from students, schools, youth serving organizations, uh, and media across the U.S. Um, uh, a feature story about us aired on NPR's Marketplace Morning Report a couple weeks ago on November 21st. Uh, we've done interviews with uh, other public radio stations in a number of states. Uh, we've been covered in the Chronicle of Higher Education, Inside Higher Ed, uh, USA Today, and, and more. Uh, with our recent successes and, and growth in our programs, we, we've made some changes to our college partnership program uh, specifically, and, and we're now inviting institutions who share our commitment to supporting first-generation college students to apply to become part of our growing community of college partners. Uh, we believe really strongly that a high tide raises all boats, uh, that the more colleges, uh, that the more colleges that support our mission and participate in our program, the stronger our collective voice will be to, to demonstrate that the opportunity for college does truly exist for first gen. That's a really driving principle of, of what we want our college partners to share. And, uh, and, and that in itself should be a compelling reason to join us in our efforts. Uh, but at the same time, our programs deliver real value and, and benefits for participating institutions. We help our college partners reach prospective first generation college students. Uh, we promote and strengthen their efforts on behalf of first-generation college students. And we, uh, we share and we help institutions share and build upon best practices for successfully recruiting and retaining first-gens on their campus. So through the, the college partner application process, we'll have a chance to learn more about your institution's commitment to first-gen students. And you'll have the opportunity to, to learn more about the ins and outs of our program and certainly to ask us questions. Uh, but to help you out as you consider completing the application for partnership, uh, we'd like to give you a, a cursory overview of our program and, and the major benefits and services of the partnership. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Krista, and she's going to take, uh, take it the rest of the way. Thanks, Matt. And thank you all for uh, attending and being part of this webinar. So. I'm sure uh, a lot of you have the initial question at the forefront, well, who exactly are uh, Center for Student Opportunity and I'm First College Partners? Um, they typically are four-year residential colleges and universities that share our commitment to support uh, first-generation college students. Um, our college partners are generally characterized as institutions with above-average retention and graduation rates, um, as well as a clear commitment to first-generation college students. Um, as de demonstrated by the campus programs and services that support them. Um, our college partners form a strong network of colleges and universities committed to supporting first-generation college students, and through our programs are able to share and learn best practices for successfully recruiting and retaining first-gen students, uh, reach prospective first-gen students, and promote and strengthen your institution's effort on behalf of first-generation college students, as Matt just alluded to. Um, as a nonprofit organization, part of becoming uh, a, in partnership with us is that we do ask our partners to fulfill an annual uh, partnership contribution to sustain and grow our programs. And I'm happy to answer uh, questions regarding that at the end of the presentation. But another added benefit of being a part of our community is the storytelling project. Um, our storytelling project was inspired by the uh, It Gets uh, Better uh, campaign that I'm sure many of you are aware of that was in support of the LGBT community when uh, uh, suicide rates amongst bullying was increasing. Uh, so taking that concept, we're collecting YouTube video stories from first generation college students and graduates from across the country, uh, and even some who aren't first gen but carely deep, uh, carely, uh, deeply care about them, like you see uh, Secretary of Education Arnie Duncan here. Um, but in together, these stories will inspire and offer advice to the next generation of students who will be first. 
Um, creating a video is easy to do so, and I encourage you all, if you are first gen or uh, if you have uh, colleagues that you know or stellar, uh, stellar first generation students that you know, uh, to, to share uh, a video and provide some tips um, uh, and advice for our student audience. Um, tips and instructions could be found on our website. Um, anyone, as I mentioned, can record a video with their webcam or smartphone, upload it directly to YouTube, and then send us the link through the Share Your Story form uh, to add to the project that you see here. Um, and I encourage you all to check out what other individuals, institutions, uh, peer institutions have done uh, to get a deeper sense of what we're looking for uh, with our storytelling project. And through our programs, college partners are able to directly reach prospective students while promoting and strengthening your institution's effort on behalf of first-generation college students. Um, this is achieved through a web application that we have built that you see here. Um, our partners are able to manage the benefits of partnership directly through our College Partner Dashboard. Um, I will get into more details about the features of the College Partner Dashboards that you see here as I move throughout the presentation. But alongside that web application, I'm First is also a college search tool designed with first gens in mind. Our directory of college partner uh, universities uh, and colleges, pro, uh, we feature the profiles of you to help students answer the question, you know, what's in it for me as a first generation college student? Uh, we really want our students to be able to go through the process uh, with in mind of finding a best fit institution for them. So alongside that, as a partner, you're given a college profile on imfirst.org, as you see here with the example of Bucknell University, um, and you are able to manage uh, your I'm First user, uh, user account and, and profile uh, directly through the dashboard. Um, our college partner profiles focus on the important campus programs and opportunities that you provide for first gens, um, such as, you know, does your campus offer a fly-in program for prospective students? Um, do you have summer bridge program, programming for incoming students or peer mentoring uh, on campus to help students persist to graduation? Uh, these are all uh, examples of, of certain programs that would be featured and highlighted on your imfirst.org profile. Um, we also have facts and figures on the college profile that highlight uh, important student diversity, student success, affordability, and admissions metrics. Um, as well as, you know, all of the relevant contact information for your institution. And what's really cool and unique about our profile is that students can tell you, they can tell a college if they're interested in you, and they're also able to share your college information uh, with friends through social media and other social networking platforms that you have. Um, and so that green I'm interested button that you see there is, is a capability that we've been able to build in that allows our students to directly connect with you. Uh, as well as you see there, the sharing and, uh, on Facebook and over uh, Twitter feed. And moreover, uh, as a college partner, uh, as a full college partner, you're given direct access to thousands of motivated first-generation college-bound students on the site uh, and the information that they provide within their I'm First profiles when they sign up as student users. Um, as you can see here with the example of Adriana from Napa, California, uh, some of the inf information uh, ranges. It includes anything from extracurricular activities to certain honors awards to their self-reported GPA, uh, SAT scores, um, of course, uh, what year they're graduating from high school as well as what high school they, they attend, uh, and other contact information such as home address, phone number, you are given access to email, um, and other demographics such as, you know, uh, their ethnicity and self-reported annual household income. And over the past few years here at CSO, we've learned how important it is for our partners to form relationships with community-based organizations and college access programs. So our college partners are given direct access to a national database of college access programs, community-based organizations, and other youth-serving programs on I'm First. Uh, we currently have uh, over 2,500 of these organizations, and this number is growing. Um, it has grown to what we believe is the largest comprehensible directory of CBOs and college access programs. And previously, uh, this information was given offline to our partners. And with I'm First, we are really excited to move the directory online so that our partners can have immediate access to it. Uh, this database also allows for our partners to go beyond just high school visits during recruitment and connect with these organizations serving thousands of youth. 
And this is an example of what uh, of the CBO and College Access Program uh, profile looks like on I'm First. Uh, we're working to get these organizations to fully build out their profiles online, uh, but this is a more comprehensive uh, example of a profile. Uh, here you can see an overview of what AXIX does, um, as well as relevant uh, information such as the populations that they serve, uh, the programs that they offer, uh, and, when, and when they uh, have these programs provided. Um, you're also given the contact information uh, of the individuals that we have here for these organizations so that you can further uh, connect with and communicate out to them. And, of course, as you see here, these uh, examples are also uh, capable of being shared over our social networking sites. I'm First is also a go-to place for students to get answers to questions about college. Uh, one thing that CSO does every year is we're able to award scholarships to first-generation college students who uh, in turn chronicle their college experiences and give advice on the I'm First blog. Uh, and so that's what you see here. Uh, this year, we were awarded eight new scholarships to first-generation students who were matriculating into one of our college partner institutions. Uh, the scholarship is at a level of $2,000, renewable for all four years. Uh, and to date, we have 35 bloggers who have received a scholarship from M First, and it's just another cool way to be able to document the first-gen experience and to be able to connect our students together. And as Matt alluded to, um, some of you may be aware of the uh, guidebook that we send out and distribute every year. Um, with the new I'm First project, it has been rebranded uh, to the I'm First Guide to College. Um, and so alongside the tools and resources that we, we provide on I'mFirst.org, um, we distribute this, this guidebook um, across the nation. And what it is is a unique college guidebook that is designed to help first-generation college students really make their college dreams a reality. And unlike typical college guidebooks, CSO's I'm First Guide to College features the programs and resources the colleges offer in support of first-gen students. So students and their families and supporters and high school uh, counselors find full description of resources that they need most, including great articles, uh, such as an example that you see here, and interactive worksheets to help our students and their supporters properly prepare and plan for college from the beginning of researching best fit institutions to completing the college application. And what is really unique is that we highlight uh, your college partner profile within the guidebook. And again, uh, similar to what we do with the web profile online, we focus on the important campus programs and opportunities for first-gen students alongside the fast facts metrics uh, that you see here and, of course, relevant contact information. And since its first publication in 2008, uh, we have distributed over 20,000 copies nationwide. And every year, our college partners help us sponsor distribution of a few thousand of these copies to high schools, community-based organizations, and youth-serving organizations of their choice. And so not only are we able to disseminate these tools and resources uh, to, to high schools and different community-based organizations, but this also helps our, us grow our relationships with these organizations uh, across the country. And as we keep alluding to, a big aspect of partnership is being included in this community of like-minded institutions that share in our commitment to support first gens. And so other added benefits of partnership include promotion in an e-newsletter and over social media. Our I'm First e-newsletters reach 40,000 students, counselors, and college access providers. This monthly newsletter highlights opportunities for first gen students on your campus. And it's also another way to connect our community of college partners together and see who is providing similar services supporting first gens. And with the uh, grant that we received through the College Knowledge Challenge, we we're really able to leverage our social media platforms such as Facebook and Twitter handles um, to help promote these programs and opportunities that your institution provides even further uh, to our first gen population. We also have our regular best practice webinar series. Uh, which engage our community of college partners uh, to share successful recruitment and retention tactics for first-gen college students. Some topics in the past um, have included the power of uh, near-peer mentoring and how to work with community-based organizations, and they are partner-driven. And so our college partners will be panelists 
um, uh, 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 during these webinars, and uh, they will share uh, about these opportunities and programs that have su been successful on their campuses to the other college partners. And we're uh, aiming to expand this effort of best practice uh, further by incorporating a series of white papers based upon our webinar topics. And so we're really excited within the upcoming year to be able to also offer those uh, to you. Another really cool thing that we're doing that we're finding really successful for our students is Google Hangouts. And it's just another way to reach students uh, where they're at online. And so our partners are able to participate in our Google Plus Hangouts that are hosted for students. Uh, topics range, but they could include admissions, uh, application, uh, scholarship, financial aid. Uh, we hosted one with uh, the Department of Education about FAFSA, and we were able to present uh, in, in very uh, clear language to our students, you know, what is FAFSA, what is it all about, how is it going to affect them, and what it means. And so we're really excited to be able to have our college partners also be in participation uh, with these Google Hangouts to reach more students. And lastly, we're continuing to look at ways to facilitate communication to and between our college partners throughout the year on a continuous basis. And so we're looking to implement college partner listservs and or shared interest groups. We want our college partners to be able to share ideas and ask questions among one another and are um, looking to form these shared interest groups to, to assist with that and to help our college partners connect with one another outside the best practice webinars and white papers and outside of the e-newsletter promotions and Google Hangouts that are hosted for students. And so as Matt mentioned um, in the very beginning, we are inviting colleges and universities like you that share in our commitment to support first-generation college students. We're inviting you to apply for inclusion in our community of college partners. Um, we are now accepting applications uh, through December 31st, uh, which is the first deadline, to begin partnership on February 1st of next year. Uh, partnership is a year long. Uh, you can apply directly online uh, at that link you see there. Um, and I encourage you to, to jot it down uh, right now if you're interested in submitting an application. And the application itself, uh, we do ask a series of questions, uh, as Matt mentioned, to, to get to know your institution better and, and the work that you're doing to support the mission of, of helping first-gen students. And so some of the questions um, that uh, you will be asked to answer is, you know, tell us about your school's mission and history and provide any relevant data on your first-gen uh, college student population, retention, and graduation rates. Um, you know, we want to know about what important campus programs uh, that you have that support first-generation college students uh, academically, socially, and financially. Uh, we want to know about them um, because, as we uh, mentioned, this is the information that we highlight to our student population. We uh, will ask about uh, campus-sponsored programs or partnerships that support pre-college students locally or nationally. And uh, we want to know those campus contacts who would be involved in the partnership, whether it's within admissions, whether it's in marketing, uh, whether it's in your di diversity offices. Just for a few examples. And so when your application is received, uh, there is a series of steps that occur after it. Uh, we invite you to a phone interview uh, so that we can learn more about your institution's effort on behalf of first-generation college students, um, as well as during this interview, give you the opportunity to learn more about the benefits of partnership, uh, demo the I'm First uh, user experience for college partners in more detail, and ask any questions that you may have. Uh, after the interview, we'll notify you via email within five days if your partnership has been approved. And then we'll ask you to sign a college partner agreement to initiate the partnership, um, which does include uh, issuing this partnership contribution invoice and setting up your user account uh, and profile on I'm First. And so creating that profile would really be the first immediate step. And off the record, uh, for those of you who have joined our webinar today, we thank you. And we'll, uh, we're allowing you to extend the deadline a little bit into January uh, following the holidays. We know it's a very busy time for you all as we're wrapping up uh, before uh, the Christmas and, and New Year uh, begins. Um, but we still encourage you to submit the application as soon as possible. But uh, as an added bonus, if you need more time after the New Year, uh, we are happy to extend this deadline for you. Um, and I'm happy to mark that down if you want to shoot me 
uh, a quick email just to let me know of your interest and so that I could uh, look out for you following the new year uh, to get in touch about the application. And so at this time, we're happy to answer um, any additional questions that you may have about the information that was presented to you uh, today. Great, Chris. I'll give you a chance to look at any questions that have come in or are coming in now. Um, and uh, just to recap and, and summarize, uh, hopefully this was a, a good introduction uh, for many of you to the CSO and I'm First program and, and how we're working with our college and university partners. Um, you know, we'll, we'll field a few questions now, but certainly the, um, the, the phone interview process gives us a, an opportunity not only to learn more about you guys um, and your efforts on behalf of first-gen students, but to walk through our program and our partnership uh, a bit more intimately and, and to answer uh, some of the specific questions um, that you have. Chris, any questions you're seeing? So um, somebody asked if a copy of the PowerPoint can be provided after the webinar today, and I'm happy to uh, send a recording out of this very webinar to you all um, after it's been concluded. And some typical questions that um, are asked uh, regarding how do we connect with our, with our students. Um, a lot of uh, our connection with our students stems out of our relationships with high school guidance counselors and the community-based organizations and different college access programs. Um, and through the years, since the conception of CSO and I'm First, we've been formulating these relationships even stronger. Um, but with uh, the, the launch of I'm First, we're able to reach more students on a national uh, basis, not only through our, our uh, social networking and social media sites, uh, but also through the outreach of our college partner institutions. Um, our, you as a college partner do help promote the awareness of I'm First, especially as you're going on recruitment travels or if we're all attending different com conferences together. Um, and so you too are a driving force in disseminating this information to reach more first-gen students. There's also been a lot of unique ways that our community, uh, our organization database has been utilized. Um, one of our college partners is the United States Naval Academy. And they used uh, the directory to reach out to more students to bring awareness of the Naval Academy uh, to the state of Louisiana. And utilizing the community-based organization directory, college access directory online that we have uh, through I'm First for you to, uh, to access, they were able to invite uh, those organizations to their campus um, so that they can get a tour and, and bring all the resources back uh, to their prospective students that they work with. Um, and so that was a really cool uh, way that the organization directory was utilized and um, we received a very uh, gratifying email from one of the contacts down there in Louisiana. Uh, they were very confused on how the Naval Academy found them and uh, after explaining it was through us and through I'm First, um, they were thrilled and they were excited to have that opportunity. Other questions you want to answer before we wrap up here, Krista? Yep. I'm just uh, being able to sort through them. Uh, one of the questions is, uh, do you obtain a list of first-gen students from uh, ACT? No, you know, we, we have not uh, resorted to, to purchasing student names um, at this point uh, and kind of taking that, that more commercial approach. We have been you know, we, we've grown our, our reach and our traction uh, much more organically, um, and it's through outreach to uh, the high schools, the college access providers, um, uh, social media, Google grants that we are, are, um, are spreading the word and, and growing our, 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 um, our user base. Uh, there's another question about uh, the contribution for membership. Uh, it's asked, uh, is it different depending on institution size, type, or is it a standard fee? Uh, with that, we offer two sure, levels. Yeah. Go ahead, Chris. You can field it. Sure. <laughs> uh, we offer two levels of partnership. Uh, one's at the associate level and one's at the full level. Um, at the associate level, we ask for a standard contri recommended contribution of $1,500 for the year. Um, and at the full level, we ask for a standard recommended contribution of $2,800 for the year. 
the associate level partnership kind of limits the, the relationship to more of a, a marketing advertising relationship, if you will. Uh, the school is, uh, is provided a profile on imfirst.org as well as in the imfirst guide to college. Um, but that's kind of the extent of the relationship. Uh, the more collaborative and strategic ways we're supporting college partners in accessing the, the student database and the organization directory, um, distributing the guidebook, and participating in our, our best practice and learning community uh, are benefits reserved for our, our full level uh, college partners. Um, another question is about the extension of the deadline uh, following uh, the new year for the application. Um, we're looking to maybe to about January 10th um, as a final, final deadline, so just so you can mark it on your calendar um, as a heads up that um, that's most likely what we're leaning towards as the final uh, day for inclusion, for initiation on February 1st. Um, another question has been about how many partners do we have. Uh, we have just under 170 uh, college partners currently right now. Uh, the majority of those, about 120 of them, are full partners, and the remainder are at the associate partner level. Uh, there's another question asked if we have lapel pins of the I'm First logo. Um, we, we Right now, at the moment, don't, but we have a lot of other uh, creative ways that we can work with you on utilizing the I'm First logo on your campus institution. Um, and we're happy to connect further to explore what those um, possible options may be for you. Yeah, we don't have pins yet, but we have t-shirts, we have stickers, we have a, a, a web badge. Um, uh, a logo that um, college partners are proudly displaying on their website and then other marketing collateral. Um, uh, I appreciate that question. Um, again, we have another question just for clarification of associate partner versus full partner. Sure. Um, so uh, the application will, uh, will um, walk you through the uh, the, the two levels of partnership and, and the benefits of each and ask you to indicate in the application uh, which level of partnership uh, you're interested in. Um, in the follow-up uh, phone interview, we'll be able to, to talk more specifically about um, that and answer your questions. But in a nutshell, the associate level partnership uh, is a $1,500 partnership contribution it provides uh, colleges with uh, a profile on the website and in our guidebook, um, but that's kind of the extent of the relationship there. Our full partners uh, fulfill an annual um, $2,800 partnership contribution, uh, and, it, and that includes the, the whole kit and caboodle um, uh, in addition to the, the profiles online and in the guidebook, um, access to the uh, uh, the student database, um, the, the organization's directory online, um, a distribution of the guidebooks to low-income serving high schools and community organizations of your choosing, uh, participation in um, our, our best practices learning community, the webinars, um, and uh, uh, et cetera. So um, uh, hopefully that, that's helpful. Um, and, uh, it can be uh, further researched on, on our website and, uh, and discussed um, in our, uh, our follow-up conversations. And if you guys have any other questions, we do have some more time to uh, help answer them. If you're not seeing any others, Chris, I think we'll, we'll wrap up and invite uh, anybody who has uh, additional questions as they're uh, completing the application to, to shoot you an email. Uh, we'll follow up uh, this webinar with a, with a copy of the recording. Um, we thank you so much for, for your time and your interest in, uh, in, our, in our work. 
Um, we look forward to receiving and reviewing your applications, um, if possible, um, before the end of the year. But as uh, Krista mentioned, we are planning to announce an extension of the, the application deadline um, to January 10th. So if you need a few days after the, the new year um, to complete that application, we understand. Um, and uh, we look forward to learning more about your, your institution um, and your work on behalf of first-gen students. Uh, and uh, after we receive the application, we'll be setting up the, those uh, phone interviews um, to learn more and to, to answer your questions um, about, uh, about the partnership at that time. So everybody, please have a, a Merry Christmas and, and a Happy New Year, and we look forward to uh, working more closely with you in 2014. Thank you all. Happy New Year.